Hi, I'm Angela Hughes with the Insider Travel Report. I'm meeting with Sean Winton today of Golf Inspired, and we have so much to talk about with his brand and how hot the golf industry is here on the Insider Travel Report. Hi, Sean. Hi, how are you? Welcome to the show. Thank you. Tell me a little bit about your product because golf is so super hot. We're over here in Portugal right now at IGTM meeting with a bunch of suppliers and I've been traveling with you and we've been learning a lot about the golf market. Mm -hmm. Well, you know a lot about the golf I market. Do. I've been learning a lot about the golf market from you. Talk to me about your history for a minute and how long you've been in the business. Yeah, well, thanks for the opportunity to be able to tell my story and introduce it to your, uh, your audience. But I've been in the industry f since 1996, started the, the golf travel desk at Pro Travel in New York back in, uh, that's a long time ago, but it was, uh, we started off doing Scotland, expanded over the years and now we're a global a global brand and we do travel all over the place, which okay, is wonderful. Okay, so started with Scotland. If you notice that accent, yeah. you are what? <laughs> I'm a Scotsman. He's a Scotsman. We invented this silly game. <laughs> yeah, so he knows all about golf. So started in New York. You actually came to school in the United yeah, was, States back when? Yeah, in, in 1982. Um, I came off the boat, so to speak. <laughs> Landed in New Hampshire, um, southern New Hampshire. And uh, the... The funny thing is I came to the States for an opportunity to have a better life and better opportunities, but the irony is I end up taking Americans back to Scotland to play golf. So well, that, it's the is, that is the beauty of everything, yeah, living in great. America, playing golf in Scotland yeah, all the time, right? Well, that's the dream. Yes. How, how big is the growing market right now in golf? I mean, um, it seems so popular that, that high-end sports is really a place that people want to niche down and be. Yeah, I think um, during COVID, I think the real winner was golf um, mm -hmm. because it's brought a lot of people that were dormant in the game, brought them back. Okay. Uh, it's brought some, some novices into it because they couldn't do anything else. I mean, they got out and played, but, <laughs> but then that's it. But it's once you get past the intimidation factor of golf and you go out and you understand what it's like, it's you, you love the game. And then when you do it locally, the next step in that progression is to get your bag, get on a plane and go see the world of golf and different destinations. And bring your friends. That's the 100%. important thing because 100%. golf is all about relationships and friends, I think, yeah, right? Absolutely. I mean, it's, uh, they, they say that golf is good for business, it's good for friendship. The relationships you build on the golf course are phenomenal. And it's not necessarily just about the, the, you know, the game and the rules. It's about the, the giggles you're going to have, because you will. You have, to, you have to laugh at yourself. I don't care how good you are, you have to laugh at yourself. And right. you make others feel welcome and have some fun with it. So who do you think the ideal market is for golf right now in the travel industry? I mean, you could say everybody, but I mean, if you are narrowing down on, you know, who would you advise agents to narrow down in and target in on? Well, it's a great question. I mean, I think um, for the years I started off in a travel uh, travel agency and I was able to speak golf on behalf of the travel advisor because the travel advisor today um, and back then, golf is an intimidating transaction. So I think there's a huge opportunity right. for, for you, the travel advisor, if you've got clients that you know um, are members of the country club, they do all the travel, their family travel, mm -hmm. their business travel with you. But when it comes to that golf trip to Scotland or Ireland or South Africa, whatever, they're kind of bypassing you and going direct to the expert itself. Right. So we are trying to focus on how can we help uh, provide you, the advisor, with some resources and tools to be able to expand into a different business segment. And golf is a very profitable business segment that I highly recommend uh, you get into and explore. And this is one of the first questions I had for Sean when I started working with him is, hey, look, I don't have a lot of like golf background, you know, played in college, played with my husband a few times. Could I really sell the golf market? And yeah. what's your answer to, because I'm representing probably 90% of the people watching this right yeah. now. No, I, I think that um, it's all about who you know. <laughs> and if you know me, I've got an extensive background, almost 30 years in the industry. I'm a huge relationship guy. It's yeah. all about who you know in this industry. We want to make the world a wee bit smaller when it comes to golf travel. Right. Um, I think that if you work with us, you we're hopefully going to give you that confidence that, hey, I just need to get my client on the phone and let him do the talking. And at the end of the day, that's how the transaction right. works. We do all the heavy lifting for you and we make it, make it work. We hope we make you look good, yeah. but your clients are gonna have an amazing time and a wonderful destination, depending on where it is in the world, so. So the great thing is, is just qualifying that client and maybe introducing them to golf because I don't think people are necessarily calling up asking for a golf vacation. This is something that you can easily go, okay, you're headed to the UK. Why don't we infuse some golf into the mix? Why don't we grow 
a, a Spain, Portugal golf itinerary, if you've mm. done Spain a few times, this is something you're going to want to introduce to your clients. Now you've got so many like pre-made packages that mm-hmm. you can have for people. You can do custom as well. And like he said, it's easy to um, just reach out and he's going to like send that over. And really all you have to do is pick up a, a few vocabulary words and you can talk <laughs> intelligently. You've learned a few one. this week. But... <laughs> I've learned a few this week traveling with Sean. So um, who, who is the ideal travel agent then? For this, I think uh, I think all of the travel advisors. I mean, if you're, I think the the destination travel when it comes to Scotland and Ireland, it can be generally um, a guy's trip that's going just purely to play golf, six seven rounds of golf in seven days. It's you wake up, you go play golf, you come yep. back, you rinse and repeat. But I think when you're going to different destinations such as Portugal, where we are today, which is an amazing destination, you're coming for the cultural experience and the golf then therefore becomes the, the complementary piece to it. But as you well know, you play golf for four hours, it's all the other things that you can do yeah. in the destination. And that's what, with our brand Golf Inspired, that's what we're trying to bring to your customers, to our customers and, and make it memorable. Now, I love the idea that you brought up a group of men because I learned this week through the statistics here at the show, Mm -hmm. that women is, uh, there's such a huge part of the market. And how are you capitalizing on that? And how should the the audience be capitalizing on that as well? Yeah, I mean, it's, I think the couples market is, uh, for for us is, is growing, especially in the, on the golf travel side. Okay, so couples. Okay. Couples, yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Um, we've had uh, we've got a travel advisor that we did a, a trip to South Africa last November. Yeah. One of the travel advisors, she's traveling back again next February with uh, with thirteen of her lady friends to do golf safari, wine experiences, and just celebrating the, right. the the game of golf and the lifestyle that supports it. So. Those, it's a growing segment for ladies to yeah. be able to travel with that uh, type of uh, itinerary. But what we would like to, to tell uh, you as a travel yeah. advisor and any of your clients are uh, traveling that we're here to do everything for you and make it uh, seamless and easy for you. Yeah, and such good tips from Sean here. Um, it was stated this week at the conference that women are more likely to travel international to golf with women together than men are. So uh, that's yeah, a well, surprising statistic. Was it that, uh, yeah. that's, a, that's an interesting one. Yeah, <laughs> we're, some, we're all still always still learning about yeah. how that is. But, you know, for me, I think it's, um, you know, the, it's, it's, it's heavily in the couple side of it. And it's and it can be two couples, three, four couples. They're sharing with their friends, especially for those that are empty nesters and want to go see the yeah. world and, and involve themselves, not just in the passion of golf, but all the other passion points that that, sell, that surround the game. Okay, let's talk about the hot destinations for golf because Mm -hmm. um, I think notoriously Scotland and Ireland Mm -hmm. always are at the top of the list, but we're discovering that there's so many other countries. Let's just start with some European countries that are really popular right now. Yeah, I mean, and might surprise you guys. (laughs) Yeah, no, I think um, the Spain and Portugal. Uh, are definitely two amazing golf destinations. The golf, the quality of golf is fantastic. Unlike Scotland and Ireland, the weather is a little bit more guaranteed here, <laughs> where you're going to get lots of sun and, and warm temperatures. Um, other destinations. Not this week. <laughs> yeah, well, where did we better rain? But, <laughs> yeah. but uh, sun shining now. But uh, Italy um, is a very, uh, it's a, a young golf destination, but it's up and coming, just having a very successful Ryder Cup. Yes, yeah, so we just, just had the Ryder Rome. Cup in Italy, and this is so interesting because yeah. there's. There's so many courses in Italy, and if you have repeat people who love Italy, but maybe they don't want to do your standard Rome, Venice, Florence trip, and they've they've done the coast, but they like going back, you can incorporate golf in for easily a seven day vacation. One hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, if you're moving around Italy, I mean, you can you can bounce around uh, you know some of the golf resorts right. today, which offer everything that Italy is, right. uh, and the golf quality is is really really good. So it's a great destination. So further afield than that, from a destination standpoint, South Africa is is an amazing destination for for many reasons. But the golf in South Africa is just absolutely stunning. But you combine that with the safari and the 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 wines and everything else. It's I mean, it's amazing. So so that's from the European standpoint. There's good. There's the island of Madeira, which has got a couple of good golf courses Mm -hmm. on it. There's Mm -hmm. so many great little spots. Yeah. Yeah. And one that you didn't say that I picked up on this week was Morocco. Morocco. Oh, you, yeah, yeah. You, there's actually been huge golf events there and shows. And yeah, it's true. Uh, IGTM in 2019 was was yeah. there in Marrakesh, and Marrakesh has has a handful of great golf courses. But again, you're in Morocco, which is is a really special destination as right. a whole. Okay, what can we expect on price points if 
you know, I think everybody's goal is to always go um, to St. Andrews to mm-hmm. play on the old course. So difficult to get a ticket. It is. Yeah. A ticket. yeah. Well, access is, <laughs> access access is difficult. Yeah. yeah. Access is difficult. How does that work out when somebody calls there? And what, what are tips? Because I feel like everybody wants to go there first. And um, like we were discussing this week, it's almost impossible to play there unless you have an insider connection. And yeah. what, what do you guys offer on I, that? And well, it's uh, uh, St. Andrews, as much as I love it, it's yeah. uh, it's a very difficult destination. It's a very yeah. difficult ticket access to get. Just the demand is so so huge. But there's other post- courses there. There, there absolutely yeah. is. I mean, there's other mm-hmm. parts of Scotland that you you can go to, and we like to try and sell away from St. Andrews just because it's very difficult. Okay. Uh, it is that bucket list course that everybody must kind right. of tick off their list. But you can go up to the Highlands, go up to the Aberdeenshire, down to Ayrshire, where I'm from, Turnbury and Royal Troon, which is going to host the Open in 2024 so you've got that but you go into Ireland you get the same down to England yeah. England doesn't get as much play but it's you know it's uh, you know the British Isles and as yeah. a whole I don't know if I can say the British Isles these days but for us it's all <laughs> Lynx golf which is all around the coast England has some amazing golf courses so does Wales uh, so those kind of off the beaten path uh, destinations yeah. it's worth exploring because St Andrews and Scotland as a whole and I hate to admit it because I'm Scottish, but the price point is getting a wee bit too high. Uh, I'm heading to St. Andrews next week for another conference back to back. Okay. Uh, God help me. <laughs> I'm going to make it through these two <laughs> weeks, but I'll be with the industry. And one of the messages that I will be bringing is like, hey, guys, we've got, you've got to watch your price points because against all the other destinations that are out there, you're, you're kind of going to price yourself out of the marketplace. Okay. So the takeaway from that is if somebody's asking for St. Andrews, <laughs> yeah. Cross sell over into other 100%. golf courses, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. And generally, people want to play three, four courses when they go, or do they stay on one course? Yeah, the typical golf experience, uh, even with uh, you know, if it's with couples or it's just a gents or a ladies trip, it's uh, it's usually seven nights, five rounds of golf, five right. six rounds of golf. Um, if you're in St Andrews, you're going to be you're going to the lottery, which is the ballot they call right. it if you can't get a guaranteed tea time which is very expensive but that's the most cost effective but if you can stay in St Andrews for a week um, then you've got those other opportunities and they go play the other courses that are there okay so we manage all of that for our clients okay what I'm finding so another surprise there's been so many surprises mm-hmm. getting into this field um, the price points in Spain and Portugal are incredible I mean I, I'm a Floridian golf's expensive in Florida golf's expensive in the United States it is yeah. And that, that's really a selling point for people is getting them out of the U.S., getting them abroad playing golf. Yes. So well, what they might spend in airfare <clears throat> is no comparison to what well, they yeah. well, I mean, might if, spend at Pebble Beach, right? Well, if you're coming from the east coast of the U.S. and you're, yeah. you're flying, you know, if you're going to fly to Edinburgh or, or Dublin, I mean, it's five and a half hours. If you're going to fly to Lisbon, it's five and a half, yeah. six hours. I mean, you're just coming further south. The value... Um, prospect here is so much better than what it is in in Scotland and Ireland. The green fees are um, probably at least 50% less, maybe yeah. maybe a wee bit more than that. Um, and the quality of golf is amazing. The hospitality of the Portuguese, are, it's... The food. The food. The food, <laughs> the wine. All week. <laughs> the wine for me, it was great, yeah. it was wonderful. But uh, yeah, it just it's it's an amazing experience. In Spain, very similarly, uh, you, can, you can travel from, you can cross the border from uh, down in the Algarve, you can cross over. You can be in Sevilla, Granada, Cordoba, Marbella yeah. very quickly by road, which is which is really good. So and he it's was a great connecting that with football games. I almost said soccer. Yeah, well, yeah, no, it's football. Yeah. Football. Yeah. Yeah, I've been trained. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you were you were watching a few matches and then playing some. Football. Well, so yeah, there's well, so many on combinations. A, on arrival, we we came into Lisbon, drove to drove <laughs> yeah. to uh, so, uh, to Seville and and saw uh, Scotland play Spain. We didn't win, but we qualified for the Euros. I didn't want to bring that summer. up. Yeah, yeah, I didn't want to bring that up. That's okay. It was. Uh, the Tartan Army travel well, and we had a good time. Okay, okay. So, when what what is the average length for somebody when they're planning a golf holiday? Uh, you mean the lead-in time and so forth? Well, let's talk about how, how long do people do Americans um, come and play golf for? Is it a week, five days? And does it depend on if they're just traveling with guys? I would think that that's going to be a shorter trip because people yeah. need to get back to their, yeah. their families. It's it's generally. Minimum six nights okay. um, for the Scotland Ireland uh, destination, but when you're coming into destinations like Spain, Portugal, it can creep up from seven to ten days. And then if you're going further afield to the likes of uh, South Africa, or yeah, Australia, that's going to be Zealand, a couple weeks probably. Yeah, it's, yeah. you you want at least uh, 13, 14 days there, so you can fully enjoy it and relax because you're traveling quite a distance to get there. Right. So, 
Right. Your network is so important to this whole piece. Um, there, there are a lot of golf destination management companies out there. There's a lot of hotels that have golf and you may be thinking to yourself, like you can just book a hotel and play around. How, how is it different? Like what value are you bringing to somebody that thinks, well, I can book the Ritz Carlton and just get on the course. Yeah, sure. We can all do that anywhere Absolutely. in the United States, yeah. but what, what added value do you feel like golf inspired is bringing to, to the market? Well, it's, it's a great question because yes, there's those individuals who will want to go uh, go online and book mm -hmm. their own, uh, you know, resort stay and they can absolutely do that but if you're looking for expertise i think what what golf inspires bring is that i've been in this game for 30 years uh, the relationships that i have mm -hmm. are are truly global and golf inspired is housing the best golf travel experts that are native to their countries so when i say it's all about who you know it truly is all who you know and to be able to get that native local see a destination through the eyes of a local that's what we're bringing yeah. to the table now it's you can go onto Google and and try and find them, but this is a trusted network. Right, we're dealing with uh, you know very affluent clients at times, so yeah. we have to deliver on behalf of of you, our travel advisor, right. but also directly to our clients. It's really really important. So the network is key. The other thing that might really fascinate you guys is he's got a golf pro on staff, mm -hmm. and so for me that was crucial this week. Yeah, well, I'm I'm curious to see what you think. I mean, yeah, so. Um, Backstory: hadn't played golf for quite a while and uh, brought Bill on. Uh, Bill was literally teaching me on every hole. Did you feel like I improved? You absolutely did. <laughs> yeah. 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 But I actually thought, what a great idea, If especially if you're bringing a group of women or people who might not feel so experienced, you can work a golf pro into the price. Am I correct on that's, that? That's 100%. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and um, his golf pro can travel with your groups. and. Um, and so is that for the full time or would he just drop no, a few no. days with you guys? It just or? depends on the, on the program. I mean, from if you're the, the travel advisor mm -hmm. sitting at home and you want to get involved in golf, mm -hmm. I mean, we will have a set of discovery programs, which we did here yeah. in the first three, four days of this trip. We brought our... Uh, now, let, let, let's phrase that again, because he uses the word discovery trips. I do. Versus fam trip. And why is that? Well, it's key <laughs> because I think in our industry, um, you know, our supplier partners they make investments for us to come explore the yeah. destination. And I feel like sometimes it's it's abused. It's become a problem in our industry. So from the discovery trip, the people that we want to invite and, you know, you as a travel advisor, hopefully you can reach out and join, do us what, what Angela did here, but you can come into the destination and experience what's there. But if you're going to come to a destination, you kind of know that you can, yeah. you've got clients that will probably want to go to that destination. So we hope that who we're bringing is they're, they're qualified and they're going to go back and they're actually going to help produce and tell the story of of the destination and the, the, uh, the properties that you've stayed in. So it's really, really important to bring some, you know, some credibility to it. Okay. So I think one of the added values of your program is that you can actually work into the program a golf pro to travel with you. You brought Bill along this time yeah. and he really changed the game for me. Do people want that? Do you feel like people are going to say like, well, I don't even know if people would know that that's an option unless you presented it to yeah, them. Yeah, it's, it's, it's generally not an option yeah. unless it's requested, mm -hmm. but it's something I think that um, we can present for, for our groups that are, yeah. that are looking for that, uh, some tips. It's always nice to get some tips along the, along the line, but Bill is 24 years as a PJ um, class A professional and, He's, uh, he, he makes the game so much easier. And yeah. Bogey, bogey bad, very, very good. I mean, it's, it's very, very elementary, but it's, he brings that element of fun to, in, to the game where you can go out and enjoy it, play with a little bit more confidence and, yeah. and come off smiling, which, yeah. is, which is key. Yeah, and he, he really can help you change your game. I know I was out there feeling a little unconfident and he made it just a few, you know, Grip changes for me, little twist. Absolutely, I mean, uh, I felt like it made a difference. It the go golf, as we all know, can be intimidating, and yeah. you're like, "Who's watching me? Stop looking at me!" And blah, blah, blah. I'm like, "No, it's okay. Yeah. We're all here. We're all gonna maybe make make a bad swing, but if he can help you feel at ease, uh, you're gonna enjoy the game a, yeah. lot, a lot better." And I, I think feeling at ease is something that your company makes it really easy to do, not only to work with you, but to make you feel like. You can you can restart at maybe a niche industry. It, let's say you've only been working in the cruise segment or the wine segment mm -hmm. or um, the honeymoon segment. This is really a segment anybody could pick up. You don't know, you don't even need to have to play golf. No, 
Definitely not. This is a billion dollar industry. It really is, absolutely. And it's uh, it's about resources. And, and today's travel advisor is very, very busy. And yeah. the, the, you know, the DMC as a whole is very important to you. So you're fast moving at all times, but we would like to just let you know that there's a, there's a great resource for golf here, which is 30 years of my relationships all under one roof. Yeah. It's trusted, it's one service procedure. We make it easy for you, it's turnkey. We make you look good. End of end of story, but it's it's profitable, and we can help you ease into that uh, into that segment of the, the travel industry. Yeah, yeah. So his name, Golf Inspired, really does help you feel inspired about playing more golf, even if you're a hacker like me. <laughs> I actually feel inspired. Like I want to keep playing. I want to keep finding out more about the industry. I want to keep growing my profits. Where can people find you? Golfinspired.com, which is okay. which is the easy place to get us. Uh, if you're interested in, in learning how to get into this space, just reach out to me, uh, send an email. Uh, I'm always accessible and we'd love to have a chat with you. Yeah, and you can actually help train your agents to, to sell more golf. And really, if you, if you feel like this market's for you, move into it now because it's just growing, growing, growing and the destinations are becoming more unlimited, including Asia, which we didn't even talk about. Um, and of course the US destinations, if you wanna sell domestically, just weekend destinations, Absolutely. you can definitely do that. There are lots of domestic courses here, Hawaii, Pebble Beach, South Carolina, Absolutely. Florida, Trump, yeah. everything. One of the things that we do uh, pride ourselves in, even if we can't uh, both earn any sort of commission, there's not enough uh, in it, what we'll do is we'll, we'll point you in the right direction. We'll suggest who to call, what to do, and make it really easy for you. So that's that's yeah. a concierge that we're, we're, we offer to yeah. all travel advisors. Shaman's long-term relationships with, with advisors and, and their networks as well. And so definitely get inspired. Please. Thanks, <laughs> Thank and you. I'm Angela Hughes, Insider Travel Report.